There are few things in life comparable to the unbridled joy of discovering a game that plays just as beautifully as it looks. Sonic Overture is a 32-bit inspired prequel to Sonic 1, bringing back scrapped concepts of that first title like Rabbit Man and Sleepy Egg, while also designing a brand new adventure in the process. Fully equipped with fake loading screens and a Sega Saturn startup logo for full immersion. The current demo only has the first two zones completed, but even in that small amount of content, still manages to nail classic Sonic gameplay. How do the fans keep doing it? It's not like it's the same people every time. There's always a new group of geniuses is coming out of the woodwork who drops some masterpiece demo and then never finish it. Right off the bat, this game is gorgeous. Vibrant, surreal color schemes ripped right out of Knuckles' Chaotix, and nostalgic flavorings of Sonic CD's past. Everything about it screams retro, all the way down to the bit-crushed waterfall sound effect that feels like it's gonna pull me into a deep dream. I think that's my favorite part about it so far, how well it replicates that surrealistic dream world setting that the original Sonic was based on. Everything has that sun-scorched glow and heavy contrast that looks like a Dali painting. The game is colorful, but not oversaturated. The world is realistic, but not always logical. The music is catchy, but not max energy. I've seen some discussion that the current soundtrack isn't as good as the old tracks that they had to replace, and that's a totally fair stance, but I do think the direction towards a subdued, moody vibe suits the goal of the project very well, especially in Sunrise Gate Act 2's case. You never know, though. Anything could change. I love how different each act is from the other. Sunrise Gate is obviously the Green Hill parallel, a statement that may terrify the current generation of Sonic fans, but then Act 2 is almost its own archetype, taking place on what looks like a pink metal ship with a mystic ruined civilization in the background. The PTSD of getting lost is already setting in. If it weren't for some returning assets, I would have mistaken this for a separate area altogether. Granite Zone, a play on Marble Zone, is a dense forested ruins area with a bunch of lava like the original taking you in and out of dark castle interiors. And then Act 2 brings in a rainstorm clouding the sky. Not quite as contrasting as Sunrise Gate, and we do step away from that surrealism just a tad by grounding ourselves in man-made architecture, but the significant changes in scenery keep these zones far from going stale, and the level design only solidified my captivation. Yeah, it's the spirit Sonic, what do you... How it really feels like they took Green Hill and made it longer. Not taller like Palm Tree Panic and Angel Island, not flattening it like an Emerald Hill, but a full-scale extension. You even walk past the old goal ring where the demo used to end to show where the expansion was made. Every act runs at around two to three minutes apiece, casually, so we get a pretty substantial amount of content, especially for an early game classic Sonic Zone that's meant to canonically precede the original. And I think this gives you a good amount of time to connect with all the gimmicks and get a feel for how the whole thing is gonna flow. Low. Because like with Green Hill, you can kind of do whatever you want in Sunrise Gate. There's no pressure to conform to any playstyle yet. The top is open and free, the bottom more crowded and hazardous, but it's also home to a lot of well-hidden secrets. It made me very happy to see the breakable walls return with bountiful goods on the other side every time. They're not easy to spot either. You have to go pretty out of your way to notice that there's a ground under you, then turn back to find the right path. Sometimes it'll even trick you by putting a spring in the way that takes you higher to safety, missing out on those goodies unbeknownst to you. Even some invisible walls here and there. Yeah, how about some more and not that? It's a stage that can be played fast or slow at any moment you please, without being so massive that you feel like you're gonna be here way too long if you keep stopping every time you get curious. And despite being a Green Hill recreation, there are a lot of differences that make it quite refreshing. Even just rotating the checkerboard to a diamond shape does a surprising amount of work. Indoor loops return, but the extravagance has been cranked up with big, drawn-out swirling sequences. Background foliage is more majestic as well, I love the normal loops being made out of rock, I think that's such a cool aesthetic. Scrap Brain-esque spheres are placed in midair that you can roll around at your own risk. Totem poles have been added to the background that you can land on and even jump off of to reach higher places or be flung in a direction. This is actually one of the main unique gimmicks to Overture's name, as it appears in every act in some form, like the trees in Act 2 and the very tip of the sun symbol. It's a cool touch of personality to give to such an already expressive character that you know the original Sonic team would have probably bounced around in some way back then to incorporate. 
incorporate. I mean, look at the balancing animation. That thing's more wobbly than a US marriage. Admittedly, though, there is a jarring quality to suddenly perching on an object that you weren't trying to. Whether it's jumping through the air on a speed run or attempting to smash an enemy or item box that happens to be right next to one, taking that brief half second to process that you've been halted in place multiple times throughout a given stage can become bothersome, especially when it leads to unexpected damage. My hatred grows. Maybe touching up their positioning or hitboxes could be considered to iron out any conflicting scenarios. Not entirely necessary, though, because Granite Zone, I think, handles it very well with these stone pillars often used for reaching a shortcut or saving you from falling into lava, hopping from one point to the next. Due to their more sparing usage and general increase in height, landing on them by accident is much less common. The level is also more box-like in shape with verticality, so soaring through the the air is not something you'll be doing as often. But make no mistake, while Granite Zone may share similarities with Marble, it is by all accounts the cooler older brother who may or may not have a different dad. There is no waiting in here or pushing blocks. Instead, we have tighter, more hazardous platforming, retaining all the speed for those who can get around it. These orange flipping panels are genius. It's a small platform that on its own requires a bit of precision to land on, might be kind of tough. But towards the beginning of the stage and in places where they're mandatory, they're clustered together so that you you don't have to be pixel perfect landing on some tiny square, while still having gaps in them to inspire a bit of consideration to your movements. A middle ground in between one big platform that you can't fall off of, and a single tiny one with no room for error. Also, it just looks really cool. Then, as the zone goes on, they become more isolated to up the ante and promptly humble you. I will crush! Another fun gimmick is the stone ball in Act 2 that you can ride, breaking through certain walls and crushing enemies with ease, including previously indestructible ones like fire. It's got quite a bounce too, allowing for some leeway with getting around even when jumping off and getting back on, so you'd be surprised how far you can take it. This is the kind of creativity you want to see in these games, letting me do something totally wacky that still services the goal of getting to the end quickly. It can put you in some unfair situations since you're uncurled while riding, so it might be better if you just got knocked off without losing rings and had to look for another one like a power-up. Granite is a pretty massive zone, way more vertical than Sunrise. There's a really cool secret at the very top that you can only get to with a specific jump. Once I saw that spring, I knew they put something up here, and sure enough, there were a bunch of ring boxes scattered around for me to roll into. I love this kind of stuff, always will. Again, the knowledge on display of Sonic level design is exuberant. No weird out of place gimmicks, pointless waiting sections, or gratuitous recycling of assets. It's constant platforming with a purpose no filler. The other unique feature to this demo is the chain link score multiplier. When you destroy an enemy, a meter begins draining with a link number next to it. Destroy another one before it runs out, and you'll replenish about 30% of it back, increasing the number by one to represent how many you've destroyed consecutively. Not only will the corresponding adjective become more enthusiastic the higher you get, but the enemies themselves become worth more points, going up by 200 for every link you have. Item boxes count as two and one, so you definitely want to go after those. Rings can even refill the meter to help bridge the gap in between sections, and I think invincibility slows down the meter to give you more time. If you're at all familiar with my appreciation for the score attack in Project 06, then it should come as no surprise that I got quite addicted here. There's no tangible reward for doing it, no rankings or bonuses, but the rush I get from barely snagging that enemy, seeing what new eclectic word is next, planning a route to finally nail that personal best, reaping the glory of those insanely buffed point values is all so exciting that it actually made playing the normal way hollow by comparison. It felt weird to not be bound by a timer, killing enemies at a leisurely pace. There is a degree of blunt memorization required because you can't see where enemies are until they come on screen, but there are enough spread out everywhere that if you simply go fast and don't mess up, you can rack up a huge chain on most pathways. I'd always wondered how a score attack would translate into classic Sonic, and I think I found a very strong applicant. Now, if you're still not totally sold on Overture and waiting for that Keanu Reeves whoa moment, then may I direct your attention to the Granite Zone boss fight. After a short cutscene, Sonic hops aboard one of the scrapped Marble Zone planets from the background and rides it in a 3D chase after Eggman, where you launch yourself at him to chip away at his health and avoid the branches. I love when retro-inspired games put something in that at the time of their hypothetical era would have been considered groundbreaking. Because in the context of what you're playing, 
it still kind of is. Even though we know technology is more advanced, it's easy to get sucked back into that old mindset when you're engaged with such an accurate recreation of the past and get wowed by this stark detour in gameplay. Also, Sonic, you stood there while he got away and then acted surprised when he did. What is wrong with you? As for the fight itself, it's pretty cool. Depth perception is a bit of a concern. These trees are tricky to find the hitbox on at first, but they at least make you transparent so you can actually see. It is really easy, though. You barely take any damage, so I think it could stand to be buffed just a tiny amount. I remember being struck with a bolt of sadness after I beat it, too, because that's where the demo ends. Talk about going out with a bang, I wanted more. I was so impressed. The understanding of what makes classic Sonic feel right and the innovations made are impeccable. Now, that's not to say there aren't problems. This is an in-development project after all, so no, it's not perfect. While I praised the second boss for its creativity, the first one in Sunrise Gate is, uh... Let's see, how do I say this? Sucks! It's cute that he throws out a coffee cup and a mean bean jelly guy, but there's nothing here. He can barely get a wrench out before he dies. I get that he's supposed to be sleepy and unprepared, but... Get a grip, old man. The physics, while a very strong replication of the Genesis, do mess up here and there. Getting bounced by a spring while rolling and I weirdly decelerate in a way that never would have happened before. An inconsistency that can come up in a few areas. Certain slopes have an automated speed boost to make sure you get through, and it can feel odd to suddenly be launched by some inconspicuous tile. Even when you think the properties might be overwritten, like riding the ball. If you touch a curved surface, you go flying, and it gets stuck in the wall, forever rising out of reach. The floating spheres in Sunrise Gate are broken as far as I can tell. If you roll around one, it will fling you off at a random time, which is definitively unreliable. You clip onto this ledge at high speeds, and through it at low ones, have a seat. You can mash the jump button to reverse your direction in the big loops and jack up the scripting. The hit detection on these swinging spike chains is... Not quite there, especially when there's so little flat ground to stand next to them. There are less invincibility frames, which could throw you off, leading to some unfortunate juggling. A block that simply doesn't exist, letting you sit inside of it. This was driving me crazy. I thought I kept missing the jump somehow. An enemy that I straight up fell through. Well, at least he showed up, right? And I rolled through a fireball, which was nice, but why? As far as enemy placement is concerned, it's classic Sonic, you're gonna run into things eventually, so yeah, there were some unfair moments, but nothing more egregious than the official titles. I think the worst is when riding the ball because you have to be uncurled, so much like modern dating, you have no idea what maniac's arms you're gonna fall into. The totem poles in Sunrise Gate became a much bigger problem when enemies were placed right beside them, causing me to pose instead, losing precious time, breaking my link. There also seems to be a timer bug where the numbers get messed up and then the score multiplier doesn't work at all anymore, usually after a few minutes have passed. The sound effect volume is all over the place. Some of these are way too loud. The fireworks that come out of enemies could stand to go down by a decibel or two, same with the spin dash and rolling sound. Collapsing platforms are a jump scare all on their own. But nothing compares to what that rabbit does to you. It's like, haha, what a funny cutscene, right? <laughs> By far the craziest glitch, though, is after hitting a signpost. If you hold left, Sonic will fight the urge to go right. Keep holding this during the transition into the next act, and you will teleport to the very end. Just run forward about 10 seconds and you're at the boss. This works identically in both Act 1s, however, if you try doing this when going to a new zone, like Sunrise Act 2 to Granite Act 1, then you'll just die and respawn without any music. If you die a second time, the music will come back, but if you happen to only have one life left and get a game over, if you try reselecting a stage from the main menu, it won't be able to load it, killing you three times consecutively until another game over sends you back in an endless loop. All the while, the game over jingle keeps playing in the background over top the menu music. That is wild. But hey, shields carry over into the following zone, that's pretty cool. I should mention that there is another fan project in development that uses Overture as a template to go in its own direction, and that's Sonic Legends. This gives everything the mania coat of paint, and wow, is it another beauty. Hyper-detailed animations and environments, things like putting scan lines on the green shield, oh, you've got me. Even the old music is back, which... 
Yeah, it's, it's really good. Act 2 is a hard track to give up. Sunrise Gate is much more densely packed here. You can get to the top of the stage in seconds by jumping a few times due to how tightly layered the background is. Fall to the bottom and you can spin dash back up to a new area. There's never a dull moment. The pacing and talent on display is exquisite yet again. The technical performance is also rock solid. No sound mixing issues. Physics are bulletproof now. The spinning boulders behave exactly how they should, no longer enforcing trust issues upon the player, letting you access some cool secret areas way up high you would have never seen, and the joys of flying through the air. Both bosses were considerably better than the original Act 2 as well. This purple machine has some cool animations. Act 1 is still a bit too much of whale on me while I do basically nothing, but still an improvement. I did experience occasional slowdown, a couple crashes, and fell through this platform right here somehow, but in general the polish was great. That being said, despite this lovely overhaul, I can't say I prefer one over the other. I think both styles have their own merits that the other doesn't. Legends doesn't have that surrealism that Overture does, that faithfulness to a bygone era. It's pulling out all the stops to be a modern, classic Sonic game. It's got the drop dash, elemental shields, combine ring, items at the end screen, bosses in each act, everything that Mania had is here. And I would argue that there's a charm in dialing it back to a time when a spin dash and a shield was all you had. One boss per zone, level design that wasn't so compact, giving you room to breathe and take in the atmosphere, music that makes you think more than pump you up. Both acts of Sunrise Gate are a lot closer in style here than what Overture did, a bit shorter too. There's no granite zone, instead we have Panic City going for a totally different vibe, and no chain link system or jumping on totem poles. These projects are different enough from each other to not be locked in deadly competition. I want to see them both continued. It would be tragic if either one was abandoned like so many others. I had a blast with these demos. Overtures in particular really got me excited about Classic Sonic again. If they can maintain this level of quality throughout the whole game and polish up the technical problems, we could have one of the greats on our hands. When official games don't fill the void, the fans come through. Best wishes to the dev team. I hope they're able to complete their vision. I know I'll be checking it out when the time comes. Until then, thank you guys so much for watching, and as always, don't forget to check out the next episode whenever I post it, which will probably be soon. Alright. See ya.